Yeah guys, what up, Viper here, and today I want to give you one of the strongest teams in the game at the moment that is at the same time super super beginner friendly. It will teach you most of the fundamentals you need to know to become a master in Alluvium, so let's get right into it. Okay, here we are, and we are talking about a very very simple 5 Balwok, 3 Bloom, 3 Arcanite team. So why is this so beginner friendly? Well, because it is a very, very fundamental aspect of the game where you play Bulwark Alluvids, which are the main tanks, as your main tanks. And then you have a rogue in your team, so you have access to the enemy backline with Lolura, and that rogue is also a very, very tanky and disruptive rogue, so there's not like a lot of really intricate things where you have to be, damn, if I position this slightly to left or right, it, it's gonna die, it's not gonna, no, it, it's fine. It's a very tanky guy. It's there to disrupt and be annoying for the enemy and it's always gonna do that. There's not some next level rocket science thing you have to um, be aware of. And then you have a range damage dealer with five rocks, which is just a high DPS unit that also you can position super, super freely. So there's not, again, this kind of thing of like, okay, I have to put my dual left shrimp beam kind Kind of thing in like this position and then it has this perfect angle to that enemy and then it finishes the, no it's just a high auto attack based damage dealer no crazy things to be careful about just position it like somewhat safe or maybe switch the positioning you don't have to switch a lot it's one single unit so that's really great and then the last thing which is probably the strongest part of the team, at least currently, because that is what we are playing around, that is what we are bonding our ranger with. This is the core of the team, the Phosphorus, the Bloom Arcanite, a super high stats, high base stats, melee carry, damage, pseudo assassin Alluvial, because for some whatever reason the ability has infinite range, and if you angle it correctly, like you can learn in one of the recent videos I made about this Alluvial especially, talking why it will probably stay forever in the meta, why it will st forever be strong, and it got nerfed a couple of times in the current patch, it is still one of the best things in the game. Check out the video if you want to learn more about Phosphorus specifically, and more in-depth things about this, uh, this Alluvia and also this team comp, but on the fundamental TLDR, super high damage dealer melee, super super tanky because it's a tier 5 stage 3 Alluvia, insanely high base stats, more than 2000 HP, a lot of physical and energy resistance, and with Bloom, it has a lot of health region, and there's no real counterplay to health region, there's no way to reduce that, so it's like the super uber version of healing. And yeah, due to 5 Balbox in your team, as you can check right here we check the synergies we have Balwox. five Balwox also give 50 energy and physical resist to the entire team so it's even more base that's even more tank things combined with the innate health region from bloom so this guy is incredibly tanky and incredibly high damage dealer and it scales its damage throughout the fight with bloom and with some of the augments that we will get into so that is the fundamental idea, you have a bunch of small tanks, uh, these Lynxes, you don't put them in until later, but due to the recent balance patch, Lynxes are a lot stronger now, especially compared to their small Balwar counterparts, so in some later stages in the game, you want to start with the Grokos, yes, for sure, but then you swap them out for the Lynxes, and you, that allows you to reposition, and a really, really cool thing that I believe many people are not really over, uh, not really realizing yet, the Lynx stun AoE of the ability, the range got increased. That also means that now Phosphorus, which has a really high auto attack range, is getting stunned by the Stoic Lynxes. Compared to the Grokos that have a very low range on their stuns and they are not stunning Phosphorus. So if you're seeing a bunch of enemy Phosphoruses, your Lynxes can actually stun them and can change the fight. Also the range is super super high, so if people are positioning Firox very much in the front line, or almost in the front line, because they want to be safe against your Rogue, well now your Lynxes might even get a stun on the Firox if it is too close to the front. So that is a really, really good combo. That's why I like having these two Lynxes in here and not just running eight Alluvials like the most standard people would be doing. Then outside of that, well, we have the Earth Psion weapon. We want to bond the weapon with our Phosphorus. Why? Well, because we get the Bloom Arcanite out of that. Great. We want to have three Bloom. It's the main carry trait of our Phosphorus. And then Arcanite, the main damage trait. It's very important to note that in this team, late game, Phosphorus is very, very tanky and Firox doesn't have super insane damage augments anymore. So your Ranger 70 cost weapon and 40 cost suit is very strong in this team because it gives you a tremendous amount of damage 
And with Bloom, the ranger is also pretty tanky at the end because scaling fights, scaling health region, scaling more mega power, and so on and so on. So don't undervalue equipping 70 cost weapon and 40 cost suit around turn 5 to turn 6 already. Don't try to be like super late game with it about it. And then let's get into augments. Augments are pretty easy and straightforward and also one of the strong suits of a team that is only running two weapons and 10 or less alluvius because you can run a bunch of them, which means it gives you a bunch of variety and attack decisions. Now let's start with Firox augments because Firox every single game is going to be 30% attack speed augment, the hyperkinetic stimulator and the exalted photon ripper for the pure damage uh, option of it. Don't take crit chance, take pure damage, 52 pure damage plus attack speed. It's great on Firox. Firox has a lot of attack speed from Arcanite trait and from its own Omega ability. You can see the Omega ability gives you 35% attack speed boost for 6 seconds. That's a pretty long boost. And if you check out Arcanite, Arcanite at 3 will give us 30% of energy cost as attack speed, which in Firox case is about 40%. So that plus the augment, we have like 100% attack speed bonus on Firox. So pure damage on hit, very, very good DPS choice there. And it's very good against all the other people running a bunch of bulwarks and tanks with high resistances as well. Then talking about Phosphorus, again, I suggest check out the Phosphorus specific video to know all the specifics and uh, details and so on. But in this team, we have the two main defensive augments for Phosphorus which is the Exalted Temporal Safeguard. Both of those options can be viable. Cleanse and Immune is very good if your opponent is running a Toxic team or the 35% damage reduction if your opponent is just running a standard damage-oriented team. But again, very, very important. If you're playing versus Mud slash Toxic teams, which are pretty common at the moment, choose Cleanse and become immune for 4 seconds on Omega. That is a key to winning that matchup. And then we have Exalted Photon Ripper, which synergizes very, very well with the whole idea of Bloom and Health region that scales throughout the fight. Because if we pick the gain 16 physical and energy resist every 4 seconds, the tooltip says every 4 here, that's actually wrong. It is every 3 seconds. This augment is way, way better than the text here uh, makes you believe. It's, I, I don't know, it just needs to be fixed. But yeah, every 3 seconds you get 16 physical and energy resist, so you get a super, super tanky. 20-30 seconds into the fight combined with a super high health region your opponents literally can barely ever kill your phosphorus that at the same time is still a super high damage dealer and then we oftentimes want to combine the, sta the standard augment choice would be the resistance and the omega power gain on omega augment here on omega you choose gain 20 omega power so your phosphorus just deals more damage throughout the fight at some point it's just going to kill the entire enemy team if your phosphorus on the other hand is dying pretty quickly and there's like nothing you feel like you can do about it don't play a damage augment play this damage augment if the fights go like 30 seconds plus already anyways if the fights are faster then you want to play double defensive augment then you want to play the damage reduction here plus the scaling resistances and eventually your five rocks or eventually your phosphorus whatever they will deal enough damage but surviving is the most important part at first. Then the rest of the augments, you want to give uh, two lifesteal nearest to allies gain 12% Omnivamp slash gain 16% Omnivamp on the Exalted version. You want to buff Firox and Phosphorus with those two so that your Phosphorus has even more health region, even more lifesteal and becomes even more of this immortal Giga Chat super tank uh, monster creature that it is. Then most of the time you will be putting your Siphon Matrixes on your Lolura, so it is more disruptive for the enemy backline, as one single Lolura with no augments on late game would not be disruptive enough to be honest. So these two augments, attack speed slow, usually the option very very powerful. And then we are down to the last options, which are just the standard defense late game options. You can choose gain and vulnerable for 6 seconds, just if your Lolura is in front of uh, the big enemy team, and vulnerable six seconds is a very big damage mitigation. The fawns option, honestly, should not be underestimated, especially if you're running the Lynxes in the later stages of the game and your entire enemy team is like low healing, low defenses. Maybe the fawns is gonna deal a lot of damage to them. Maybe if they don't have a AOE lifesteal buff on a Firox, for example, Firox with the high attack speed might literally kill itself versus the fawns, which are just damage reflection per auto attack. And then I think the best defensive augment in the game, Survival Protocol. Both of those options are super, super viable. Indomitable for six seconds if the enemy is playing like Psyon or super high uh, burst damage DPS kind of things. Or the shield option if especially your Alluvian might 
not be the sole focus of the entire enemy team, then 800 shield might like, last longer than the 6 seconds. Also, it triggers at 10% health, not at 1%. So the 800 shield, um, also cleansing all things like toxic, etc., might make 10% plus 800 be better than 6 seconds. The same goes for the lower versions of the augment. And then in the last standard utility augment would be anti-healing or anti-energy. Well, anti energy good against every team, anti healing overall a niche counter. But hey, if somebody plays a full healing focus team, you can beat it. Okay, let's get right into playing the game with uh, playing the showcasing game. But fundamentally, the games are not too different. You usually just go into the first round with Atlas, Groco, Water Groco, and Kara Blue for free water, free Bulwark. All right, we found ourselves a mirror. My opponent is running double phosphorus and double weapon instead of an expensive weapon and expensive suit. So I do have more late game damage output and I do have some higher quality late game Illuviates with Lynxes over Grokos. Opponent has uh, a couple more augments for that. So let's see how it goes. It's pretty interesting augments. Uh, I think the new Vampiric Prize is a very, very strong augment. So I do like taking that, especially because there's no really good quantum reclamation target in my team or Louisville that can use it very well. And this one is very good on Phosphorus as well. But with the current meta for the snake being pure damage and attack speed, it is not as good as it used to be anymore. I'm happy with this trade-off. Um, I think Vampiric is going to do a good job. No, the standard turn one. We put a, a Grocco in the back for my Fire Rocks to be in front of it, so the Lura can be avoided due to that. And then we can just. Um, I think we want to split side on these guys because if turn two phosphorus comes in we don't want all of my melee illuvials to clump up together and be all attacked by the phosphorus essentially now because i have earth weapon and my opponent is playing a water opening like me as well probably the same illuvials we want the ranger to be far in the back so nothing gets hyper on my opponent's side My opponent has Atlas 1v1, Ranger attacking Atlas. We have Karablu with Groko. I would say this is maybe slightly in favor for me because Karablu is, uh, is consistently gaining maximum health of the ability. So if my Karablu can get an additional ability off here, that would be very, very strong. Now Atlas being a very strong shield, Alluvial though. And having very good auto attack damage. Oh, this Grokko stun. That, that Grokko getting the stun off at 1% HP might have been the deciding factor though. Yep, I think, I think it was. Close turn 1. Many, many times in the mirror you will have incredibly close fights. That is a kind of uh, the nature of this Balwok Arcanite mirror. Now I would say we position our Phosphorus here. Maybe a bit on the side so Firox can have the corner if my Firox wants to have the corner later. And yeah, my Phosphorus can probably target both of these with its ability and we can rip quickly through them. Now if my opponent has a Phosphorus here and the runs here then it can target all three of my guys. That would be annoying. But well, if Phosphorus is there it's bad, if Phosphorus is here it's fine, if Phosphorus is here it's fine. So I would say we take the two out of three here. On the other hand, I could position my Phosphorus here. It is a uh, kind of the blind positioning thing. All right, phosphorus here, that should be fine for me. I don't believe this Phosphorus ability will hit my Ranger. That would be nice. It does hit my Ranger. Well, that is very unfortunate then. Then this positioning is maybe not that great. Uh. 
Yep, it looks like it turned out slightly. Oh, massive stun. Massive stun there. Maybe this can work out. It's probably going to depend a bit on the overtime timing. Yeah. Very, very close, like most fights in the mirror are. Now, the standard thing is to just go for the Lura third bloom and go for Firox, some more damage in this case. Just uses your points very, very well, and you can position your tanks uh, however you want next turn. Usually, you just go for Grokko and Flare because they are very cheap, and you want to prioritize getting augments onto your carries because the augments are very, very powerful. In the same sense, the weapon upgrade and the Arcane Sash on your Ranger are very powerful as well. Now, I should probably position my Ranger out of uh, line for the enemy Lolura. Maybe we should just go all, for our Ranger over here. Now, they are water, sure, but we also have a Nature Phosphorus here. So that should be fine. And yeah, it's looking looking good. I like this positioning. I like my Firox here. It could get hit by Siphon Matrix in the front line, but that is something we have to deal with. Allura is attacking my Ranger, but it's gonna get stunned by Grokko and such eventually, so it's not that bad. It's kind of the same here, the Lura versus Ranger in the tank. Now, my Ranger did die very quickly, and the enemy Lolora is here tanking, but I have a pretty good angle on my bird, and my Lolora is split tanking the Firox, so this fight is looking fine. Getting stunned at 100 energy is always really bad. Because if you get stunned, you, you at least take damage and then your energy bar fills up. Which oftentimes is okay then. But yeah, this is this HP total left. That is the one extra ability we could have gotten to win the fight, honestly. Very unfortunate to not cast the ability before getting uh, taunted, stunned by the Lolora there. Was literally what decided that fight. But yeah, again, that's, that is a demirror. You play the same units, everything same, so small things like that will make differences. I don't like this augment much because at least visually it uh, only reduces uh, base resistances doesn't reduce bonus resistance playing with a five bulwark team bonus resistance is like the more relevant part i think i two bet both of these hoping that my opponent three bets mirror the erosion and i can get both of these Oh, I think that's an okay outcome. Vengeful Smite is not bad. I think even considering Vengeful Smite on Firox is very reasonable here. Because Poison, Wound and Frost and a short stun that can interrupt casts and animations and such is very good. Now, we do want to play these for the standard overall stat increases. That is very, very powerful. I would say I'm just... Uh, just gonna go default flare middle ish to this side though and then we have 70 points left i mean 15 30 and 30 but another 30 augment maybe not that good Attack speed slow here is really really insane if my opponent doesn't switch positioning, which I don't think my opponent will this turn. So this turn using two legendary augments and hitting a siphon matrix on two of my enemies guys should be incredibly powerful. Opponent has super high energy resistance and cleanse and immune. Interesting. So my opponent is did already like preemptively counterplay my vengeful smite. That is somewhat annoying. Just like predicted that I, I would play it this turn, but I guess it makes sense. Like I just bet on the augment, right, and I got it. But my Firox has not been hitting this so far, so... So far it was not very valuable for my opponent. The bird angling my snake here with the ability is really bad. It is always very annoying after like all of the like tumult of the fight it happens that the enemy bird is just sniping your backline hitting your bird but my vampiric 
definitely did pull through if we want to check this out 6000 healing on my bird very very good now at some point my opponent can play anti-healing augments but then opponent has to invest a bunch of money into that so it should be okay we just like don't focus more lifestyle on the bird for now definitely want to focus more tank stats on the bird and the question is pure damage or attack speed on my fire rocks now my opponent having the same more or less like counter to the debuffs i would assume we focus the pure damage yeah certainly want to focus pure damage here and now my opponent should probably be moving his alluvials over here so we could be thinking about for example selling the groco putting in a water links here making my front line stronger we could also just be preemptively putting a siphon matrix on here all right let's just let's just uh, predict the opponent's side swap here the Firox didn't swap, so the Firox is still getting slowed by this. And yeah, that's not that's not great. You really want to slow Firox with the Siphon Matrix. But we are slowing the initial birth and the initial Omega, so it's not the worst. The bird is omega in a lot of my my guys, but we are also just like taking out the Firox here and i think even though it is hyper and everything this bird won't have the damage to win the fight yeah less healing my opponent already putting in the vampiric counters so we could consider transitioning out of the vampiric augment on phosphorus next turn or we just play for overall more power level myself me not being in danger of dying here and my opponent being in danger of dying I think both options are very valid probably also makes sense to play uh bigger alluvials now because most of these augments don't feel incredibly meaningful it's actually really interesting because my opponent obviously knows if my lulua stays here the firox won't do much like my opponent kind of has to move the firox but to where to here probably here probably here so i don't know i want to at least move my lulua I think moving to the middle makes a lot of sense. I think it certainly is worth to upgrade my ranger here. I think we want to position the ranger on this side. I, I don't see Lolura attacking my ranger here realistically. And I think upgrading this to a fire links makes a lot of sense. And I would say then we also upgrade my front line on the Atlas here. I like the, the shield and cleanse option. Because if it's not getting focused by the Phosphorus and the Firox, I don't value the other, the Indomitable part that highly. Alright, opponent moved away from Invulnerable, but we have some... In I mean, now the uh, Indomitable part would have been stronger, certainly, but not by much. You can see even with the shield it did live quite a long time my ranger positioning is the only awkward part now because i invested a lot into it and it is getting focused by the phosphorus so that is quite awkward but my ranger could almost finish this off so maybe if i get some phosphorus ability angles i'm not getting a good phosphorus angle that is awkward but i still have two blue alluvials alive and I have no it's just two blue maluvias alive okay so I would say the main difference vampiric didn't do a whole lot after my opponent had to invest points into countering it but my opponent having to invest points into countering it kind of just gave me a, a couple really strong turns and then I was just ahead on tempo kind of a quick uh to dedicate how the flow of the game goes in terms of positioning switching in terms of augments what to prioritize what to do and all those kind of things so i hope this was a good example of the arcanite mirror which is honestly one of the more difficult ones to play because i said it's a very beginner friendly team and everything there's a lot of like positioning switches and angles and such in here again check out the phosphorus guide video specifically to know more it's especially helpful in the phosphorus versus phosphorus mirror 
I hope you enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next one.